I think most of us have <clears throat> had a chance to to respond here, but if you're still if you're still writing, please do. And and hopefully have just a second, you know, layer of communication through the chat um, at times if that's useful. You know, if you've been talking to each other, suggestions, ideas, questions. Um, so maybe we should talk about the agenda for <clears throat> for a minute, uh, Mark. Uh, sure. So hi everybody. Um, my uh, well, so so just as a as a, a quick take on the agenda, you know, we're going to start off with a warm up, which is going to be um, an activity that we've adapted from one of the packets, uh, and we're going to use it to talk about different ways that we can adapt the packets. Um, and then we're going to do a series of activities where we're going to kind of go back and forth bet between like how to teach with the packets and then some technology, uh, some ways to approach the technology for using the packets with your students. Um, we know that, the, I mean, obviously you can see in the chat yourselves that there's a mix of people's experience with that. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep checking in um, on what you know, what feels useful, but we're basically going to be modeling some teaching stuff and some technology stuff and then give you an opportunity uh, to practice each time we kind of take take a step. So that's that's our plan for the day. Um, we're not going to show you everything that's possible, um, but we're going to show you at least one thing that's possible, one, one, a couple of different approaches for, for what's possible. Um, and hopefully, like our hope is to generate questions. And, you know, this is the way that we're kind of envisioning this is, is this is like a first step and an introduction. And we're hoping um, to continue the conversation with all of you because that's, you know, part of our work is helping these things. If, if these are materials you're going to be using with your students, it's going to be specific to you and your students. And so, um, we look forward to those conversations, but but for today we're just going to kind of show some stuff so that we can we can respond um, uh, together. So Eric, if you wouldn't mind advancing the slides, you're going to drive, right? Yeah, I just want to say one quick thing before we jump into the next part. I just just to say that <clears throat> one of our main goals with this workshop, with these workshops around the packets, is inviting you all. And we're, you're already using them. You're already teaching with them. But we're inviting. We want to know what it is that you're doing that's working. Um, one of the, you know one of the things we we decided and we were able to convince the state to do when we first started writing this these packets. We we were able to use an open access model. So there's no copyright on these. I mean, it's you know for anybody can use them. Anybody can modify them. We just ask that people give us credit if they're going to republish them. A few are, and that's not really an issue. You can, but you can, you can chop them up. You can, you can re-edit them. You can do whatever is useful to make them work for you. So that's part of our idea here is that we want to invite you in to our, you know, you probably, maybe you're already doing that, but we want to give you some of the tools that we've been using to, to take pieces and mix them around and, and, and do what works for the classroom. Cause we wrote them for independent study and now we're trying to figure out how to adapt them for teaching in a classroom and, and online now. So I'm gonna advance so Mark can lead us in the next part. <clears throat> and let me know if you're not seeing some hands. Um, so this is an image from one of the packets. And so what I'm gonna ask is just take a minute or not as I'm sorry, take 10 seconds um, and just think about what you notice, but give yourself, Five more seconds. And then and then just kind of just share if you're muted, unmute yourself, but just share um, what are some things that you notice when you when you look at this image? And I'll I'll take notes on the screen. There are nine right hands and one left hand. Okay. What else? That's the most obvious. Huh? The left hand is isolated on an end, so they're not mixed together. Okay. What else? Oh, 
all hands have five fingers. Awesome, thank you. Four fingers are up and one is to the side. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Four fingers. The, the nine hands all look identical. We have a total of 10 hands. We're looking at the inside as opposed to the outside of the hands. All. They're all white hands. Okay, sorry, you got you just got a little skew there, Joan. Um, good, good. Those are great. There's no no right or wrong observations. Um, that was fun. It was a little bit quiet, and then slowly I had a hard time keeping up with your ideas because just kind of giving that extra ten seconds and and getting past those crickets, then then more and more ideas um, come up. But if you've been part of workshops with Eric and I, you know that what do you notice is a is a question that we we love. Um, so these are these are excellent noticings. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time focusing even on that very first one, the fact that there just this idea of of right hands and and left hands. Um, uh, Eric, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, advancing the, the slide. So um, now that now that we kind of have this idea in the air, I want to focus. I want to gather and collect some data for for us. Um, so think about in of the people in your immediate family, how many of them are right-handed and how many of them are left-handed. Um, and then I'll let you guys uh, just let me know. Four right, one left. Okay. One, two, three, four right, one left. Five rights. One, two, three, four, five. Five rights and no lefts? Right, no lefts. Okay. Two rights, no lefts. One, two, no lefts, okay. I'm stuck on the word family. <laughs> family as, as it defined in any way. Could be the people who live in your home. Um, could be any way that you, you want to define it. So I have six right and no left. One, two, three, four, five, six rights, no lefts. OK. Yes. In my case, all eight are right-handed. One, two, so I'm going to one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Four right-handed. One, two, three, four. Okay. I'll say one and one, just just the people in my household. One and one. Is that everybody? Okay. Uh, so I'm for me. Uh, there are two right-handed and one left-handed. So, so it's my favorite question. What do you, what do you notice now? What do you notice? More right-handed than left-handed. Mm -hmm. I'm in the minority. Joan, are you the left-handed person? Oh, I should have asked. Who on this call is left-handed? 
Me. <laughs> <laughs> Left-handed strength. Um, okay, so they're more right-handed. Uh, Joan is in the minority. She's on the left-handed side. What else do you notice? It's 32 to 3. Okay, thank you for that calculation. How do you feel? How, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Someone. I was go just going to say that maybe you can make an assumption that right handed people are in the majority of the population. Well, that's that's a perfect segue. What how, how do you feel these numbers? Do we have how many how many people total do we have here? 35. 35. So you have 35 and we have 32 of them are right handed and three of them are left handed. So so let's to, to Joan's point. What how do you how do you how does that sound? How does that feel in terms of um, the, the rest of the world, like the larger population? How representative do you think we are? Most people are right handed. Pretty representative. Your previous slide was nine to one. This is about a little over 10 to one. We're about eight to one. I've noticed that you put right on the left and left on the right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Well, thank you for this. Um, we're going, uh, Eric, will you advance to the next slide? So, so that image, the first image with the hands um, is, is from being counted, which is one of the math packets. And it's the one we're gonna, we're gonna look at today. All of the activities we're gonna do um, and all of the technology that we're gonna look at is will work for any of them, but we, we decided to focus on this one. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna talk in, in a minute about um, a, some potential technology, our first technology foray into technology. Um, but I just wanted to share, you know, like Eric said in the beginning, when we wrote these, we wrote them to, to, to be used in a variety of situations. But one of those situations were, was that students who are not in, who don't have the opportunity to be in a program had to be able to work on them on their own, to be independent, um, which is a very challenging task. But then also, and you know, this is the other thing that Eric said, we wanted the state to give us permission to make sure that teachers could also use these and break them apart and use them in any ways that we, that we can. Um, so, so I just wanted to share two questions. This was a very small introduction, but, but in, in the ways that I think about how to take that packet from something static and when I have the opportunity to actually work with students, um, I just wanted to share the two questions I had in my mind at all times, but specifically for the, that activity that we just did, though it was very short. Um, but I'm thinking about what activity am I preparing students for? Like, what are the questions? What are the, what's the task that I, they're gonna have? Because um, the packet is written such that the text will prepare students for it. But in class, we have the opportunity to be a lot more engaging about it. Um, so what, what is that activity? And then how can I make a, a classroom activity, um, virtual or not, um, that will prepare them for that, that activity? Um, and then the second thing is, you know, we tried to include as many images as we can. And so is, is there an interesting, when I'm looking for you know, a section of the packet that I'm gonna be doing with student, what's an image that I can pull and do a notice wonder or do something with so that students don't have the text, they don't have to read, um, you know, cause the, the packets are text heavy because they're, again, they're written for students to be able to do on their own, but, but where, where's the image that I can generate that conversation and kind of build the things that students need to be prepared for the activity just through, through conversation and through some, some level of interaction. Um, so those are the two questions in terms of how well that activity prepared you for the next, you'll, you'll tell me how, how good of a job I did, but I feel like the question, I wanted to share it because it, it is useful to me to kind of narrow it down to that. Um, and so with that, Eric, I think you're gonna, uh, explore our first um, technology with the packets. Uh, yeah, so um, so there's a few things that we want to show you just on, on the ways, you know, the solutions that we've come to for a few different issues. And, and it may be that you already have solutions for, for the different things that we're gonna, the different issues that, we, that we're sharing. Um, but if you don't, then we have a few. Now, there, there are many ways to do the, these different things. So, uh, you know, one of the first things that we want 
to be able to do is we want to annotate PDFs. We, we would like students to be able to take a worksheet that's a, as a PDF and then you know fill it out and send it back to us so we can look it over. We'd like to give them feedback on that same PDF. Um, it also might be useful as teachers to be able to pull up a PDF of a worksheet and annotate directly on that, be able to scroll through it, go back to previous annotations and display that all for students, right? To collect ideas. So um, can I just get a quick poll? How many people already have a solution for that, that's, that you are using with students to annotate PDFs? I'm seeing, Johnny seems sort of has a solution, but maybe it's not working perfectly. Um, it may be something you know how to do, but st students are still learning how to do it potentially, or it's different, you know, different for different devices. Did yeah, you want to say I, anything about that, Johnny? Yeah, I think I have a solution for doing it myself, but I found that um, trying to incorporate it so that students can do it has been more of an interruption than helpful. Got it. But kind of like abandoned trying to do it as a group too much. Right, right. Does anyone else have a solution for them for themselves or for their students for this problem of annotating PDFs? I've been using Doc Hub. Mm -hmm. And then I know a lot of my students are on their phones. So um, I, I did, I mean, I, I talked to you a little bit about that, about how to get students to use their phones to modify documents. Right. right, so it depends on what people are using, whether they're using a phone, a tablet, a PC. Um, so this, the solution we're using is, we're gonna show is, Do, is Doc Hub. Um, it, Doc Hub is, is an app that's inside of Google Drive. So um, it's available if you have a Google or Gmail account. Right, so if you're able to access Google Drive, then you're able to access Doc Hub. It's, it's basically, it's a PDF editor. It's also available as an app on phones or tablets. Um, and because it's a Google, well, I don't know if it's a Google product exactly, but because it's a part of Google Drive, it's also available through Google Classroom. So if you use Google Classroom, Doc Hub is a way to edit PDFs within Google Classroom. But you don't have to use Google Classroom in order to use Doc Hub, right? So not everyone's using Google Classroom you can still use this solution um, with, the Google, with Google Drive and Doc Hub to edit PDFs. So I'm just gonna demonstrate it real quickly and then we're gonna give you an opportunity to practice it um, in case this is something that's new to you. Um, so what I'm imagining right now is that, um, is that I have a link from a teacher and let's say the teacher gave us a link in the chat. Right, and so this, this link I just pasted up into the top here is a, a share link from Google Drive. It's a PDF and, and uh, we'll review how to do this, how to create that link in a, in, in a few minutes. But first, so I'm imagining it was in the chat. I clicked on it and it opened up this drive, hopefully, or sorry, this PDF. Uh, so this is interesting. It's visible here is the title being counted page 16. Okay, so it, it finally came up. So this is one page from this part one of uh, probability and statistics, this packet that we're looking at today. Um, and here's the image that, that Mark pulled for that first activity. Uh, and we'll also show you how to clip just that individual image in a little bit if that's something that becomes useful for you. But so, now, if I want to edit this to use Doc Hub, so I'm, again, to, just to as a reminder, I'm in uh, my Google Drive here. So I've logged into Google Drive with Gmail um, or Google login and password. And then I'm able to open up and view the PDF here by clicking on that link. But I can't, I can't edit it, right? So if I click on this, nothing's happening. But if I go up here to the top and click on open with, I have, a number of choices. Now, when you do this the first time, you won't have near as many choices. These are, most of these are apps that I've added over time. So here's Doc Hub. If it's not in this list, so if you don't see Doc Hub here, you can go down to where it says connect more apps. 
if you click on that, a list of a bunch of possible apps will show up eventually. Things are slow today for some reason. So these are all different apps that are part of Google Drive that are available in Google Drive. And here's Doc Hub, and it says, you know, it's already installed, right? So that's why it's showing up on that on that list there. So again, if it's not, if you don't see Doc Hub here when you click on Open With, you can go down to connect more apps. So I click on Doc Hub. Fix ourselves a cup of tea while we're waiting. Um, okay, so uh, I've done this before. So I'm going to create a duplicate. Um, so I, I, it said, "Have you bit?" I should have explained what that was. It said, "You've you've opened this file before. Would you like to open the existing file or a duplicate?" I said a duplicate because I wanted to start from scratch. That's why it's starting over again. But it, it, it does actually save automatically. So this is a place where people can save their edits. Maybe I shouldn't have done this taking a while. But while we're waiting for the, the page to come up, these are the tools that we'll use up here to edit the PDF. So there's this, this A symbol is the add text tool. So you can actually type um, responses onto a PDF. And this tool here is the freehand tool. So you can, you can draw, you can circle, you can write freehand. Mm -hmm. I might start over again here. I'm not sure what the deal is. Let me see, let me give it one more try here. Let's see if it wants to open. What we're gonna do in a minute here is, is let, you, let you all practice with this. So if, it, if this takes too long, I might just let you practice since you know how to get to it now. And these are the two tools we're using. A to add text. Ah, good. Okay, so let's say here I want to first thing I want to do is want to add my name and click on the A here. And then wherever I click here is where to put the text. All right, so I can so I can I can write text, I can actually move it around, right? Um so you could write text answers to some questions. So like these, let's see here, how many right-handed people are on the diagram? We did this already, there were nine. How many left-handed? One, how many total? 10, right? So it's pretty easy to type and you can put, you can put these um, text boxes anywhere on the page. Um, but there's also this freehand drawing tool so let's say I wanted to circle the nine right-handed people. And so that, that becomes part of the annotation as well. Um, and then there's a, a final step in terms of sharing it back to the teacher, sharing it back with, with other people. On the top right side, there's a few options. You can download and export here. And then under this top right menu there, you know, share and send, you can get a link there, download and ex ex uh, export here. So people could save it to their own computer or they could share a link back to a teacher here. Um, so this is like share with others. So you can see here that I can get a shareable link. And if you've done this with Google Drive, it's similar to that, that you can then copy a link that you would email to other people or you could send it as an attachment where it'll send the actual PDF. Um, so you can see, I just put an email and hit send, right? So um, what I'd like to do now is give you a document to practice with this. So this is the, the, the page that we just sort of reviewed with Mark's activity. Um, what I'd like to do is give you the next two pages. So that's this was page 16, I'm gonna give you pages 17 and 18. Um, before I do this, does anyone have a, do you have a solution for sharing a PDF in, uh, in Google Drive? How would you share this with somebody, like somebody in your class? If I wanted to share it with you, what should I do? Is this something that you all already do? Do you share PDFs with students? 
How do you do it, Kate? I do it in Google Classroom. Ah, you do have Google Classroom. So it's slightly different than here, right? Because then you attach it to an assignment, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if, so I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna, so I'm, I'm not really using, we're not assuming that people are using Google Classroom. So here I'm gonna share it a little bit differently. If we were in Google Classroom, you could attach it to an assignment. Here, um, when it's in Google Drive, and we'll show you how to, how to clip these files. Maybe the first thing I'll do actually is I'll, let me remove it here. Let's assume that I don't have it in Google Drive, but I do have it on my saved in downloads or on my desktop or something. I can upload it into Google Drive so that I can share it with a class. <laughs> so if I click on new, so this is how I create new documents as well. But if I click on new and go to file upload, this is my downloads folder. And I, and I have pages 17 here already. So this is on my computer. So if I upload them now to my, to my Google Drive, it's here like it was a moment ago, but, in the, but the, to share it with students, to share it with you all, I'm gonna right click on it. So on a, P, on a Mac, this might be a little bit different. I'm on a PC, but I can hit the right side of my trackpad and get this menu that pops up. And these two choices here will let you share a link. So I'm gonna click on get link. It's probably the easiest way. And just click copy link. Anyone on the internet with this link can edit it. So copy it. Um, I will put it in the chat. And I want to give you all a, a moment to, to make sure you can open that document. So it's in the chat right now. I'm sorry, but I've, I've cut I cut uh, short conversations. I'm sure. I apologize for that. But there's a couple more things that we want to uh, show today, and some things we that you might want to practice with as well. So I want to make sure that we have time for that. Um, so how was that? How did it go? I think uh, you might be muted. Oh, excellent. It's, it's, I think it's one of the best uh, um, apps or programs uh, to use. I find it's also much better than Zoom. I too agree. I think it's a great tool. Only problem is I'm having issues with my computer, I think, downloading. Other than that, it's, it seems to be a very useful tool. There might be an issue with Doc Hub today. I don't normally have issues with it, but I, I had some issues before the meeting downloading files. So maybe it, and sometimes it just takes a little while longer. Any questions that came up? So you need to have a Google Drive to have the Doc Hub in it, or just any any Gmail account will have it. I just got it. That's great. Does anyone, anyone know the answer to that question from John? Oh, did you say, do you need a Google account to uh, open it? Any, any Google account so. would open it, yes, it? Yes, you have to be a G Gmail user, I think, right, Eric? Yeah, because it's making me sign in in Gmail. That yeah, was so, yeah. so John, if you have a Gmail, John, you, this gives you, Gmail gives you access to Google Drive and Google Classroom and all these other Google okay. things. Okay. So. If you have a Gmail, that will that will work for you. And if you don't, it's free to just get a Gmail account. Well, I, have, I, have, I do have. Yes, yeah, so you don't need a separate login for Google Drive, and it's it's part That's of. What, Google. Yeah, it's the same login. That was a question, really. Just one one account would get you all that. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and also just to just to point out, so if you're using it for yourself, then then your account. Will, will be enough. But if you want students to be able to do it, they would also need to, for students to use this fix, they would also need a, Google, a Gmail account. Okay. So you'd have to help them set that up beforehand. So um, let's see, there's a few more things that we'd like to show. Um, second here. Oops. 
So the, the second half of, you know, the second set of things that we wanted to play around with today uh, were ways to excerpt the packets. So we practice annotating them. Um, but the, the other part we wanted to practice is taking pieces of the packets to use in classes to give to students. Um, and there's two main ways that we've been doing this. One is with screenshots and clipping small pieces um, of, of the packets, like an image. So like Mark grabbed the, the 10 hands, that image, and then threw it on a slide for us to look at. So we wanted to show you how we do that. And then the other part is how we um, take just a few pages, you know, these, these packets are, you know, hundreds, more than a hundred pages, all of them. So I, we really don't want, I mean, I assume you're not giving students all hundred pages at once. I think it makes more sense to figure out what smaller pieces to give them. Um, but we want to show you how we do that. You can just take a few pages and just, and just you know, whatever length you want to take. Um, the first thing that we want to show is how to take a screenshot. Um, these are the keystrokes that you can use to do a, a, um, a screenshot. And I, I, I'm wondering again, um, how many folks here are already using screenshots to take, you know, to clip images or clip small pieces of text or something that you might insert into a, an activity. Kate, anyone else? I am. Party? Johnny? I'm using it also. Okay, we're on snipping. Good. So, may, so this, yeah, so the snipping tool. So maybe this is something everybody knows how to do already. Is there anybody who we want to make sure that we're, we don't want to be just beating a dead horse? Is there, is there someone who feels like they would like to see how to do this? How to cut a piece? No, it's helpful because, you know, I have a Mac right. and how to do it on the Mac, but it's good to know how to tell students if they don't have a Mac. Got it. We might quickly just jot these down. Of course, we'll share notes after the fact, but these are the a minute, did you say jot them down? Take a screenshot of them. <laughs> okay, so we'll take a screenshot. Right. Exactly, Mark. <laughs> I just took a photo of my phone. What's wrong with me? Let me... <laughs> okay, so I'm on a PC and Mark's on a yeah, Mac. Control which... shift four. Oh my God, wait, there's a lot going on here. So it's four thing. Command. So we, will, uh, we will demonstrate real quick. So we can talk a little bit about what, how it works. And then we'll come back and put these these uh, keystrokes back up. So I'm going to use I'm on a PC. I'm going to go uh, back to the the packet, right? So I'm going to collect at New York.org where, where all these packets live. Uh, here's a quick way to get to the packet, so I can go to the menu here. Uh, nice and CUNY fast track grass math packets. Um, I'm going to go to Here's all of them, but I'm going to go to probability and statistics part one. I'm going to click on the PDF link, which downloads the whole thing. It's 122 pages. Um, and we were looking at page 16. There's a table of contents. Let's see here. Page 16 is the page we were editing together. Or then 17 and pages 17 and 18 you worked on together. So let me go down here. So here's the image that Mark took. Um, I'm going to take a different image that we could look together. So um, a lot of this packet uses ratio tables. Most of part one is about practicing ratio tables and proportions. So this is a useful tool to introduce to students. So I'm, I'm hitting uh, shift window S because I'm on a uh, PC. So I'm hoping right now that you're seeing a toolbar pop up. Is that true? No, I don't think. Oh, what do you mean a toolbar? We only see it if you're, because uh, it's Try not part of the window you're just... sharing. It's like on, it's like. Above How about that. now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so right, so what I, I, what I, the mistake I made is I had shared a screen and not my, or my a window and not the whole screen the whole desktop. So, um, so when I hit shift Windows S on a PC, this toolbar pops up. And so I have these different tools for snipping. This is a rectangular snip. So 
If I go down here, I get a little crosshairs and I can draw around the image I want. When I let go, it takes a quick picture of that and puts it into the um, clipboard. So now when I go back to our slideshow in Jamboard, I can do control V to paste, right? Control C is copy, control V is paste. And now I have this image that I can use with students, right? And so Jamboard is a way, you know, I can start annotating and start a conversation with students. Um, so again, here I, I'm shift Windows S. When I say Windows, it's the Windows button. It's that little Windows logo. There's also a couple other different ways of snipping, like free form. You could draw just around what you want. I'm not sure, it doesn't really work with text, right? But it just snips that area. I tend to use um, rectangular snip. This one uh, snips the whole window. This one snips the whole screen, kind of like print screen. So Eric, how do you get to that window? Right here? Yeah. I hold the shift key down, I hit okay. the Windows button, and then I tap S with my third finger. Th that's on a PC. It's on a PC. So what is it on a Mac? Aha, uh -huh. good question. Okay, so. You didn't do the Mac yet. I I'm not on a Mac. I'm on a Mac, but I couldn't. Mark, do you have a Mac? I do, um, but I'm having some technical issues. So I'm going to try to share my screen, but unfortunately, it might not work. Okay, I have a Mac. If well, Mark, why don't you have oh. uh, Joan? Oh, do it, yeah, maybe. Joan, if, if you have a Mac, then yeah, that would be I'll great. Try. I'll try. All right, so what am I? Which, I'll just share. So share your screen, yeah. Um, the, and tell us the, tell us the keystrokes again, Mark. So yeah. let me, let's like, Joan, let okay, me, so. Right, so wait, wait, let me share something that makes sense. What am I sharing? All right, I think I, I X'd out of what we were doing. So. Well, if you just share your desktop, we can like go to collect ed or something. Okay, and all just, right. Yeah. So desktop. You know, just open I, up a new tab in your browser maybe. Yeah, actually I can just go to, um, I've never seen it. All right, whatever, this is science. So- Joan, I'm not seeing a bookmark for collect ed. We'll have to work on that. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. So, I so, do have it. sure. Um, God, could, big brother. Okay. Could say the answer to your question is there isn't, uh, Macs don't have this, all of those options. Um, and so, and I actually just learned a new way. So, there's two ways to do this. Um, so, Joan, if you collect, if you right now hit on a command, yeah, uh, shift. Wait, and, what do you mean command? There is. There's a button on your oh, Mac. Okay, I'm on my. Um, yeah. It's command, command and, and yes, it has command. like a little flower key. Go ahead, so yeah, I got it. Command. Holds, holds command, control, and shift. Hold all three of those down at the same time. Okay. And then hit four. Okay, I did. I didn't hear a click or anything. Okay, I did. Nothing happened though. Does it go somewhere that I don't know about? Look at, look at your cursor. I don't think you need to hit control. Oh yeah, my cursor is doing something. Look. So now, if you look at your cursor, what do you what do you, what do you what do you see, Joan? Numbers two nine five seven four zero two. And if you move it, those numbers. Oh will yeah, change. yeah, 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 yeah. It's moving. So okay. so what you've done is you took that arrow cursor and you've made it now a crosshair. So now, if you click your mouse button down, or if you're on a touchpad, hold your click it and hold it down, and now you can highlight the section that you want. And now okay, you can. Okay, I just heard a click then. Right. And so okay. once once you cover it, it'll shade the area you want. Once you have what you want, you release it. And okay. then it, you'll if you have your sound on, you'll hear a, like I a, did. I a heard shutter. It. So where do but I that's find that? But that where do that's I find not it? what Eric did. Did he take a screenshot? Yeah, Eric took yes. a screenshot. And then he went oh, to okay. But wait, but where do I find it now? So right now it's it what it did was it it copied it. So right now it's on your clipboard. So you need a place to paste it. Oh. Okay. Um, I mean, I could just go to. So, can I just put it in a, an email? Sure. Okay. So, paste, an, like yeah, that? hit paste or control V. Yeah, the the, the paste and more control V. You know, yeah. the out, our Outlook actually doesn't let us do it. Do you have a Google Google Doc open anywhere? Well, I can just go to my um, just do it in Gmail like that. How about that? 
Something's happened. Oh, okay. It worked in Gmail. So it just pasted it there. Did so you that's. See, do you see what I'm doing or you don't see my screen anymore? Yeah, no, we see. Okay. Yeah. So you see it worked in here. So, so I heard, I think it was maybe Johnny who said you don't need to hit control. So here's the, so you, it's true. If you, you can just hit and maybe, um, Joan, will you, or Eric, will you go back to the, the Jamboard, like share your screen so that we can see the three buttons or the, the buttons? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So on the Mac side, on the right there in the blue, it's command control shift four, pressing all of those at the same time will copy it. But if you don't hit control, Johnny said you don't need to hit control. And it's true. If you just hit command shift four, that will also take a screenshot, but that, that won't copy the screenshot. That will save it onto your desktop. Either one of them is, is fine. Oh, so it'll just show up in my desktop. It just will show up in your desktop. So that, so, so it's oh, there. Oh yeah, it did. Um, Oh yeah, that's so. Great. Just you know, whichever one is more useful for you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'll even I can drop yeah. another. Yeah, and can say, and can say you said it's it's just a screenshot. I think you're absolutely right. It's just the difference is with most of you know other screenshots that I was used to, it would just take a picture of the whole screen and then you would have to crop it somehow. This way, you can choose exactly what you want. Right. Maybe there's something you already knew how to do. And it, there, there may be another tool to do it as well, right? No, I think you're right, Eric, though. This gives you more control of what you're copying when you do it the other way, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna have us move forward, I think, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, we will send notes after the fact if, um, in case that's useful. Um, Mark, did you wanna talk about how this ratio table and and how I might move to the next screen here. Do you want to talk about this screen here? Um, well, can you go back one just for a second? Yep. So, so one thing that Eric said um, before we, you guys all looked at your, before you, you looked at those two pages um, that I just wanted to kind of go back. Cause you know, one question that as teachers we have to figure out is if we're using the packet, how do we go over it with students? And so they're different there. I mean, there's lots of, they're more than just the ways that I'm about to say. Um, but we were thinking about like the reason why we wanted to share doc hub. One of the reasons is for teachers, you know, it's useful because we can use them to, to change PDFs for the assignments we're going to give students, but you can also use it to go over things, right? If you think about in your, in your breakout groups, one person shared it and then the, everybody else kind of told that person what to do. So you could, so one way to envision it is you could give the, the packet to your students, they can work on it. And then when you bring everybody together, you as the teacher can open up the document um, and, and share your screen and then have students and you fill in the answers there. Um, so that's that's one that's one one way that if 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 you don't want to teach all of your students or for whatever reason just to to kind of put that out there as a possibility, um, the the slides that Eric and I have been showing you we'll share them once we're done, um, but it's in a there, Zoom has its own um, but this is a, a whiteboard uh, called Jamboard it's a it's a program also within Google that if you have a Gmail account you have access to um, for free, um, and it has. Uh, it's just a way to go over it. So just if you see on the top, so I'm going to click one. Oh, is that you, Eric? Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Um, no, no, that's cool. So I can click text the same way you can on there. So in this ratio table, if there's two left-handed people, what would you guess the total population is? Twenty. and I put it on its side so it's exciting, right? And so you can, you can type in there. And so I just took this one image from that and we can keep going. And then you can also use, there's a, a pen. And so students can go over it. And I don't wanna spend a lot of time showing this cause that's not really what this is about, but just to show that it's, it's another way to go over it is to kind of take one image. And now Eric, you can, if you would advance to the next slide. You know, so this was my, 
you know, thinking about if I was going to use this image of the ratio table to go over it with students, you know, one of the things I do, even when I'm face to face teaching is kind of plan out my board, like what's it going to look like and where am I going to put certain things so that I don't have to, so I can be, so, so I don't run out of space, essentially. Um, so it's the same thing here. I just kind of thought about, well, what, what were those questions that you, that you answered on page 18? Um, and so this is what, what just I imagine the board might look like after you go over it with students. So just again, just to show you can, I took a screenshot, put it here um, and then used it to use Jamboard and the features within Jamboard uh, to, to populate that with, with answers. Just, to, just as, a, as a kind of one example of, of, of how to go, how you might go over it with students. Okay, thanks Eric. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the last, uh tech sort of trick we wanted to share was how to excerpt pages so that you can give just a few pages at a time um, to your students. Um, can I ask how many people already have a solution for doing that? So if you have a, a PDF with 100 pages, Katana, Johnny, you already have a solution for that. Anybody else? Yes, I have it. Is that, so is that something, so maybe that's not something I need to demonstrate. John, Maron, Joan, do you already know how to excerpt pages from a PDF? Can you do it quickly? I mean, I, I, I mean, so, uh, maybe I, it can't hurt to go over it, I don't think. Um, Katze uh, or Johnny, would you mind demonstrating? Like maybe, would you mind showing us how you download the a PDF, let's say the being counted Part one, would you mind pulling that up on Collect Ed and showing us how you, maybe together we could find a section of that packet, something we haven't looked at yet, and you could imagine how to create a new assignment for students. I typically do it in preview, but I'm not sure if that's the best. Um, well, let me show you how I, I do I it, and then I, I'm going to pass it back, and you and you can tell me. What, I'm sorry, I like Jody. Wait, so I was just saying I, I kind of like drag them around in preview, but I'm not sure if that's actually the. Oh, interesting. Okay, like well, I want to see. It. I don't know if it's the right way to share. Let me show you how I do it, and then and you can tell me if it's the same way that you do it. Um, well, wait, just but before you do, just to be clear, there's no right way to do any of this stuff. Um, Right. It's, you know, and, and particularly like the, the benefit of kind of looking at different ways is because different fixes are going to work for different people based on their computer or their experience and all that stuff. Um, so I'm excited to learn that way too, because that way the preview way is unfamiliar. Um, but, but yeah, so Eric, I'm sorry I didn't mean to drop. I just no, want to no, put no that worries. out there. So, so I'm going to start back at the beginning again, you know, so I'm just back at collectedny.org. Uh, I'm going to go to being counted part one. I'm clicking on the PDF to download it. And this is the full 122 pages, but I really don't want to give students all of this. Um, and so for me, I think there's a couple different ways. I see a little printer up here. I could click on that print button. Um, or I could hit control P. The thing to remember for me that seems a little weird is that I, I'm not saving, I'm printing. So it sort of feels like a save when I save pieces of something, but I'm, what I'm really doing is printing. So I, I just do control P. Um, if I had a file menu, I'd go to file print. I don't have one in this browser for whatever reason. And then here, instead of printing to a printer and I, you know, I, so my printer is here, but I don't want to print hundred and whatever pages I'm printing to PDF. So this is what mine looks like. I go to Microsoft print to PDF but I don't want to print all, I want to print just some pages. So, well, the truth is I don't know which pages I want to print. Let's say 17 and 18, because that's what we had a minute ago, or I'll say 16 through 18, right? 16 dash 18 will give me 16, 17 and 18. Um, if I hit print, see what happens. So now it's saying, whoops, it's saying save, print output as, and I can just say, give it a name, being counted pages 16 through 18. 
um, and I'm saving it in my downloads folder. You can put it wherever you like on your computer. Let's see what happens here. I think it might pop up, but it didn't. Okay, so that means, uh, let me go find it. So let's see, I'm gonna hide this and go look at my desktop. Or it's not in my desktop, it's in, it was in downloads. So if I click here and go to downloads, there it is, right? 16 through 18, I should be able to open it up now. And it's, and let's see here, 16, 17, 18. So it's just those three pages. You can see it's three out of three. So, Johnny, your way is different than that, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it would work on a PC because I, I think preview is only on Macs. I might be wrong. So why, why don't you show us your screen yeah. and, and see it? Maybe the other app, the, something similar to what I did is also available there that may be more universal. Yeah, I'd if appreciate that. Tool, that's great. I, I tried on my Mac and it's just telling me to print, but I'm not sure because I don't have a printer how to find it. Right. Um, so what I do is Um, so if I have the PDF right now, I have it open in Chrome. Um, so if I download it, area and population density, sorry. Save. And then, oh, no. and then open it in preview instead of in Chrome, then um, there's a couple different views. So sometimes it'll just look like this in preview, but if you do the thumbnail view over here, you kind of have a menu of each page. And um, so let's say I only wanted pages two and three I could, or if I wanted pages two, three, and four, I can select page two and then hit shift to four so that I'm selecting everything between two and four. Um, and then I think if I remember right, oh wait, no. Let me try it with just one page first. So if I just have page two and then I just drag it away from this menu, I think I can just. <laughs> wow, you just drag it into your desktop? Yeah, and now I have a one page PDF. Wow, that's easy. Cool. So if I do, but the other, I can kind of do the reverse too, which is nice. So if I drag pages one, Let me make the screens the right size. I have a bunch of stuff open. So I drag the first page and it's leaving the original PDF complete. So it's not like deleting these pages. Um, but I'll do this sometimes if I have a bunch of screenshots and then I wanna kind of unify them. Then if I open each of these, <clears throat> And let's say I have two PDFs and I want to make them into one. Then I can take this thumbnail and drag it here. And now I have both of them in preview together. 
So sometimes it's a little finicky. I'm not sure like the exact rule, but it's basically if once you have something in preview, if you open this thumbnail tab, you can kind of drag and drop your way around to either merge stuff or unmerge it a page at a time. And then you'll end up with a lot of files that have similar names, but you can just kind of rename your file. Let's say it's area homework or. Is there a way to save like 10 pages all at once? So you don't have to drag, you know, each page individually to make one document? I think so. I thought it was if you select all of them. If you select all of them, can you drag them over to your desktop or to that desktop folder? I thought so, but it's only doing one page when I do it right now. So that's what I thought you did, but I, I might be. Hmm. Me if I do command. No. no. Maybe I, if it's okay, I think I might ask Joan to share her screen since Joan, you were saying you could print, but you're not seeing the option. I wonder if we might be able to help you figure out how to do it because it'll look okay. different on different computers. Okay. What I'm doing is a sort of a different, it's like a preview trick. Mm -hmm. But I think the trick that should be available to all of us is printing printing to a PDF that is an excerpt of the total. Okay, so what I, what I, am I on mute? Okay, so Joan, one okay, second. You're, um, you're sharing, I think, just your, uh, your browser with Collect.out open. Yeah, you, you didn't sharing? see the PDF. Oh, well, you didn't see the PDF when I opened it? Okay. We don't, we don't see windows that pop up because you'll need to share your full screen or your full desktop. I, Otherwise, we don't see those things that pop up. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to do this now. So you, all right. I'm sorry, this always confused. Should be the. Top do you see left. this now? Do you see this being counted? You we still do. Are you sharing just this though? I don't know what you mean. This is the PDF version, right? Okay. Well, well, let's see if let's see if this works. Well, we might not see everything that you see, but let's see if you can do. Do you see the thumb thumbnails yeah. here? Yeah. You do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I was trying. So, and when I when I work from the office with the PC, I could shift and scroll down, and then right click, and then if I do it at work, it's easy because I right click and it says, "Oh, you know, make this into a new document." And it's one, two, three. But this is a PC, uh, the uh, Mac. Let's, so let's see what your only, options are. If you go to print pages, yeah, that's my only. So then this comes up. So I started doing this. Select current page. Select pages. I put one to five. Um. Maybe there's something here. Yeah, so that's it. If you can help me go through this because I don't have a printer, but it must be going somewhere, right? So I put, oh wait, maybe advice. I have to do pages like that. Can you move your, this thing. window down just a little bit? It's, do what? It's, move this little window you're looking at, the print window. Can you pull it down? There we can go, thank you. Can you see it now? All right, I'll move yeah. it. Yeah, now, now we see the whole window. Oh, sorry, okay. So I made, I changed it to say pages one through five before I had it as selected pages. Um, and then what I was doing is saying, just print. So I click print and then I don't know where, see, you see something, well, you don't see my screen but something popped up on the bottom of my screen. But then if I go to desktop, it's, it's not, I don't if think- you could, If you could maybe try resharing, so we don't see your desktop. You, you don't. Can, no, is, is there a way that you could reshare? Yeah, but Are okay, we'll do, I'll do that now. So now I'm sharing my, so I actually want me to share my desktop. So I don't Bingo. know. Do, there you go. There is you that go. better? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now if I go to Finder, you see that now? You see this? When I click Finder, do you see that? I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this might be it. It just popped up in my desktop. Let's see what this is. And everything usually goes here, but it's not. Yeah, that's not going to be it. Yeah, so I don't, it went somewhere when I said print, but maybe it went to the, you know, printer that doesn't work. Well, so, so, so try it one more time. So I think usually it'll tell, it'll get, ask you to give it a name, like okay. it's saving it. And so if you. All right, I'm going to start. So do you see me, you see it now mm -hmm. where it says the print? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, Joan, will you go to printer where it says Adobe PDF 9.0, that first top option? Click on that and see. 
well, this was what I used to have a Canon. Right. Okay. That, so maybe that, I mean, well, that'll save it. That's that'll send it to a printer. Right. So here it's saying Adobe, right. Which is kind of what I want. Oh, wait here. So I'm going to do again, then change this to pages one through five. Right. Do you see anything else I should be doing? What happens if you click advanced? Yeah. Uh, okay. I, thinking. I think there's usually an open PDF and preview. Do you button. see that what, what you see when I clicked advance? Can you all see it? Okay, Asian fonts. I don't we see it, yeah. Oh. Let printer determine could print as image. Yeah. Send by range. Hmm. Yeah, it's it. I mean, the P, the PC at work, it's so easy. I, I don't know why. Maybe I have a sort a kind of the app. My app doesn't allow for it, which doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's a PDF. Wait, so click cancel. Okay. Yeah. Because we're not really editing the PDF. So what what if you hit print here? What what happens? When well, you that's it. So I don't know if you're going to see what happens, but I hit print. And something on the bottom, I don't know, did you just see that thing open up in the bottom of my, something popped up in the bottom of my screen and went away. It was like, it looked like a folder with a one in it. So oh, maybe it's under download. It. Maybe it's under, no, it's not there. Oh, and this did come up again, see? No, this is the one from um, 245 and it's 250. So that's not it. Documents. I have no idea where it went. Maybe it's on the desktop. That, yeah, that's that on my, um, I'm here now and it's a date, you know, it's from the date I did stuff and it's not there. How about downloads? Maybe. Yeah, I tried that. Okay. It's, yeah. Documents. It yeah. definitely went somewhere because when I said print, it went down here, something popped up and then it just went away. So it's just so weird. <clears throat> Does anyone else have a, a Mac that wants to try it too, sharing? I can try. Oh, wait, but Matt, Mark, don't you have a Mac? I do, I, I can try, but I, my connection, it might it might not the work, um, but let me try. Okay. Try oh, Kate, okay, if you wouldn't mind sharing, because for me on my Mac, what it looks like is very similar to what, when Eric did it. Um, oh, really? So maybe it's an issue with the actual program, the, the Adobe I have. Because what 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 it, what happens is it opens it it like it'll it'll give me a it, a, a pop up window will, once I hit print a pop up window opens and it says mm -hmm. it gives me a chance to name the file and tell it where to go so let's see right. if let's see if that happens so yeah that might be something maybe I need to ask CUNY to give me that version or something yeah so this is exactly what it looks like on mine. So at that setting, a destination, save as PDF. And so if- What is yours called? This is even easier than mine, I'd say. And both That's save. Great. Right, and then, so this is what, I, so then it opens and now you can both name the file, but also tell it where to go. If you right. want to go, go in your desktop yeah. or another file. This one, makes, this one is like, yeah, so then it's me. I have to figure out what's wrong with my Adobe. Well, Joe, I wonder because because it's not with it. Like I usually don't open them within Adobe, and Kate is not. It's not in Adobe, so I wonder if Adobe has some other setting that's changing it. Because because that, you know, she just just went to print just from there, work, right? Yeah. Um, All right. So I have to play around with them. Anything else you'd like to see? <laughs> <laughs> it was a doubt an art show. <laughs> We haven't gone to museums in a while. Well, I think maybe, uh, Mark, I don't know. So we are starting to get towards closing here. I, we want to hear a little bit of how, I mean, ideas about how you you already are using these tools or how you might think to use these tools or, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, no, I was just, uh, that's that's the question. If you wanted to, if you wanted to share the the uh, the final screen just for a second. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can put it up just for a second and, and take it down. But just to make sure that everybody knows, it seems like everybody's using the packets. But um, you know, if you don't want to go to collect it every time, there's there's a direct link you can use. Um, also, the thing that we just talked about, like the last thing, how to break up the PDFs into chunks. Um, we have a, a step by step a document that kind of takes you through those steps, both on a Mac and a, on, on a and on a PC. 
Um, so the links for that are there. Our contact info is there. Those are all the packets that are available. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, if, if for people to see those links that they needed, but, but I think just to go back to Eric's question, we're curious what you're thinking about, you know, if there are any questions that you have, um, anything that we can help you with in terms of making choices of which packet or how to use the packets or any of that. I just, you know, in our last couple of minutes, let's just, just open the floor. While you're thinking about it, one, one thing I'll mention is for, I'm not sure how much you all use Google Docs, um, but these packets were all written using Google Docs. So Mark and I, so that we could collaborate on them, use Google Docs. Um, and we've started to make um, some of the packets available as view only links through Google Docs. So if you wanted to do more editing of those packets, um, like let's say rewriting some text, rewriting some questions. Um, to edit a PDF, you could clip a page, clip 10 pages, but it's a little hard to like rewrite text. But if you were interested in doing more editing and or adapting of some of these materials, let us know because we might be able to give you a link. It would You wouldn't be editing our version, it would be view only, but you could then copy it and save it to your own Google Drive and then edit it to, you know, however you like. I guess the only thing we'd ask is if you have great innovations that you might share some of that with us because we're finding our way as well. If, if there are no specific questions, um, if there are, you should share them. Um, but, but one question I have for, especially for the folks who are already using the packets, you know, we, we, we talked about the, um, the technical side of, of how to chunk a packet. But uh, one of the things I'm thinking, I'm, I'm curious about is kind of what are the things you think about when you're figuring out what what to chunk? Like, what are the things you think about when you're cutting a piece of the packet? Um, like, how long? How much do you put in? What What are What are the kind of What are the things that you're thinking about that go into that decision? So I was just I've been using the inequalities packet too, and I think each segment is different. So um, I was. You, like, like Wednesday, what we did was um, an activity where uh, it had to do with students figuring out how much money they needed for a party, class party or something. Um, and I knew that I wanted to make sure that that was done in class because it seemed like a good group activity. And then there was some something with number lines before it. So I thought, okay, well, I'll use the the group activity in class in breakout rooms so that, that it generates conversation and they have to talk to each other and figure it out together. And then if we had time, we'll go over the previous activity. And, so, and if we didn't, I'll just assign it for homework. So, you know, going back and forth seems to be the thing to do. And then figuring out how to use each chunk. It's not, you know, it's not the same as being in a classroom. So. I'm constantly trying to figure out how to use material that engages them so that, and even if I'm not there, they're in breakout rooms together, trying to figure out how to do it together. So, you know, and I'm always trying to, and I feel like, oh my God, I'm not getting this because it doesn't always lead to what I want it to lead to. Um, so anyway, that one particular thing was successful, I think. I'm not sure if everything I'm doing is successful because not everything leads to where I want it to lead, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Like some of it is much more interactive and some of it it's better to do like individually or pairs or, you know, just, yeah, I'm just figuring it out. Jay, I'm curious, when you do work with the packets in small groups, because this has been something that hasn't worked great for me. Um, 
yet. In in breakout rooms, does your class kind of self like do they each have a copy of the packet and know what page to be on and and that or is there like one person who's sharing or because that's kind of been the harder part for me is if I'm not the one sharing working with these packets, then I think a lot of the breakout rooms have trouble figuring out what they're supposed to be working on. Especially yeah, so with I, phones. Yeah, so I always um, make sure that I've seg segmented the pages and shared with them. Um, so I, you know, I schedule it so that it's shared at a certain time during the class. And then they're always on it. They, they know immediately, they get an email immediately when I've shared something with them. And so everybody, if they're able to, has a copy of the assignment. And yet, what yesterday, one of my students just couldn't get it. So she, I said, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. There are other people in your group who will have it. So not everybody knows how to share their screen. That's the other thing. Some people are really good navigating and sharing screen and writing and using Doc Hub and some people aren't. So I try to separate the technology from the content. So I, I try to keep reminding myself and them that right now the emphasis is on the content. So if you don't get it on the computer, just as long as you can see it, just write it down. And then you can always hold up your paper in front of us on your camera and you can show us. So a lot of them do that. So I don't, I want to be able to separate that. And then once in a while I say, okay, now we're going to focus on the technology because I know the anxiety is already high enough with math content. Then if I'm trying to then figure out the technology with them, then it's just even more so. And then they're even further away from the math. So that's how I try to navigate it. And I, then I try to group them so that there are people in each group that might have like a desktop or a laptop who can share documents. You know, it's just, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on trying to navigate how to put people in groups so that they can function, not just technologically, but also what level they're on, you know, who's more outspoken than another. We talk about how to, you know, how to, everybody should in a, in a group should have a, a, a task, you know. So it's multi-leveled and multi-layered and challenge. So if I may add to that, I totally hear uh, what um, Kate is saying. I did have those challenges also with my students. So um, what I did was, um, and I'm sure many of you may have done the same thing, is I would share YouTube videos on how to, for example, navigate um, the uh, Google Classroom and also how to share on Zoom. And also there's times when I um, did invite um, when I did uh, conduct the classrooms on Zoom, I would, I myself would forget to um, do, uh, go into a setup where students as well or others as well can share besides myself. So I had to remind myself that and also explain to them that I forgot to do this. And, you know, so I do see the challenge of, of navigating um, Zoom itself, sharing or handing in on Google Classroom, in addition to, of course, learning math or writing, et cetera. However, I will say that um, <clears throat> the uh, PDF sharing style that Eric just showed us a little while ago was um, once they got over that little issue of, of um, you know, um, downloading from Google Classroom, et cetera, that was easier for me to deal with, you know, to just send them, you know, a couple of pages of the exponents, et cetera. And while I'm sharing my screen, letting them, you know, see what I'm, how we're working out the questions. So I understand the issues also of, of the students having um, issues with technology. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, what I, what I could say is I'm glad I came to this workshop because I know I'm working too hard. I'm, I'm working way, because back in March when this whole thing started, 
what I started doing when, with my materials that I like to work with, what I would do with the packet, I would go download it, go into the Adobe, cut the pieces that I want, put it in a PowerPoint, and then scroll through it, you know, as I want to go. And I'm still doing that. So today I learned a lot different ways that I don't have to work this hard. But that's the way I'm still doing it. It works for me. You know, it works for me, but one day, like on Tuesdays when I don't have classes, I spend my whole day cutting and pacing and doing things and setting it up for Wednesday. So I know I can, it might, there has to be a better, you know, more you know, efficient way, even though it works for me right now. So this really helps me to not work so, so hard, so to speak, <laughs> you know. So that's where I am with this. That's great to hear, John. I'm glad it was helpful. Yeah. Don't work so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working way too hard, yes. <laughs> um, Johnny, I wonder, I mean, there's a couple of solutions that have been put out, but one, one additional, like we're not really talking about Jamboard, but one way that you could use Jamboard, which is those screens that Eric was showing you, it's actually like, if, if I sent you the link, you could all open it up and you could all be interacting with it too. And so you could, copy an assignment and put it on a page of Jamboard and send your students there. And then this way, they all can interact with it. They, they all can be writing on it at the same time. Um, so that's just another way that you can share it so that more than one person um, is, can, can actually be, the, be, be writing on it at the same time. Um, yeah, I think this might be specific to my class. I've just found that Potentially coincidentally, I like the people who are most comfortable with tech are also the ones who are most naturally participatory. And so sometimes I feel like when I do, I found myself doing less breakout rooms, not more, because I found that it is worsening the amount that some students dominate participation and other ones kind of just sit there and listen. And I think a breakout room and any kind of extra links gives one more reason for someone who's already hesitant to participate from home, a reason to be like, I don't get it, this is overwhelming and I'm gonna just wait until this is over. So it might be a dynamic that's specific to my class. I've just found that the I haven't gotten the the benefits that I've been looking for any time that I've broken up my group in more than two. Because if I can break us in half and then I'm in one room and the mentor in my class is in the other, but beyond that, it just hasn't worked how I've wanted it to. Have you tried any breakouts with just a couple people per room? You would, it would have to be much lower tech sort of solution because you couldn't assume that every group will be able to download, share, or do whatever they need to do, but maybe the task would be, could be adapted. So one thing we were- yeah, I've tried yeah, to do some where it's like, give a few minutes for everyone to write down what I'm asking them to do, or it to be a very succinct problem, but then, I don't know, I've just found that it, the, the challenges haven't been worth the benefits so far and now i'm like halfway through the fall and, just, and i like there's some things that work well with the group and some things that don't um so i don't know yeah i think it's probably true that your students who are more confident technically are going to be more participatory it just as sort of will tend that way not necessarily it's probably exceptions but i think that's those two things move together probably right yeah, and everybody. I think once I'm not there, then it it takes the, it it makes those students even less inclined to participate, not more. I've found. Right, so there's no one there whose job it is to draw them out. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. There's a there's a work uh, workshop this coming uh, Tuesday evening uh, with the global math department. I sent an email around on it and there was some issues with the registration link, but this woman, Teresa Wills, is, uh, has done a lot of work thinking about breakout groups in math. 
She's a math education professor. Mark and I both follow her on Twitter. So, but I'm 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 excited about the the conversation. It's next Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. Election day. One one I was just about yeah. to say. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be sure. participating live. <laughs> but there's no we're not going to know anything at nine o'clock. I'm a poll worker. I'm going to be dead at nine o'clock. But but Johnny, if if it is something you're interested in, if you register for it, you'll get an email the following day with a link to the to the so 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 even mm. if even mm -hmm. if you can't do it live, they'll send you an automatic no, uh, registration link. Um, one thing, I mean, I feel like this is in part this is an issue that's like a classroom issue that that is exacerbated by the current situation. But one, like I've had those classes too, where it's just like that even when it's face to face. And so one thing that you might try, it's not a cure all, but you might send like make the group so that the people who are confident are all in one group or, or, or amongst <laughs> themselves. Cause then this way you can work with then just cause it, just to kind of get their feet wet yeah. and kind of get them used to the process, kind of get them on more equal footing. Um, that that's something I've done in face to face. I've never had that issue. You know, I've never, I'm not in a classroom right now. So I haven't had to deal with it obviously through the tech, which I obviously exacerbates it, but, but that does sometimes help in the, in, in, in face-to-face. -face. Um, so maybe it, maybe it's something that could translate. Yeah. Hey, Vilmani, were you going to jump in? It seems like you were going to share maybe. Something that I want to share, you say. Yeah. I so thought right I now, uh, yeah. Um, I'm in the same way, like they same with the breakout room. You know, sometimes I don't do it because um, I think um, if we were all together, you know, I'm just asking questions and they interact. But if I make like breakout room, they I don't know if they're doing like they inter uh, they are interacting each other, you know. So that's why right now I don't doing breakout room like for this week or the past week, and we just working all together. Mm -hmm. And I'm using Google Classroom and I post, you know what, what you did today, this is um, important because before I was, I was trying to figure it out how, because I don't want to share the, the whole pack, you know, like a hundred pages. So I was trying to figure out how can I take a part, like the part that I want to use from the packet. and. When you send an email like three days ago, I say, wow, this is great. So I can now I know how to take, um, I just follow the step. And I, uh, this is what I already did this week. So I pick, um, pay from the packet and I share on Google Classroom. So that's, that's great, the part. So I think this is great. Because this is something that I want to like to put all the, 100 pages on Google Classroom and they don't know where they are, you know, because we just go like um, park by park. So that's what's great for me. Just like book some pages from the packet. Well, that's great to hear. That's, I'm, I'm glad it's helpful. Well, you know, thank you for the conversation too. I mean, you know, Mark and I were both listening and it seems that maybe breakouts in math is something that we should be thinking maybe another meeting we could have in a few weeks. Um, we'll go do some research and we can all practice a little bit. Bring your, bring your issues, tell us what's working, what, what isn't. We already hear already, but, but, uh, but yeah, thank you. This is really helpful for me too. Appreciate your time. Yes, thank you all for staying. Thank you.